All right, for this video, we are going to be working in a tiny space. So I'm going to be posing myself underneath this big painting on the left hand side of the frame and I will be posing on my stairs. So the total amount of space that I'll be using is probably less than two feet if I'm being honest. And I just had to be creative with my setup. So I have my tripod set up over top of a banister. And now this is a really good tripod because it extends quite high, which makes this easier. But I have a smaller tripod uh, at home, which I would just set up on top of something like a little table to get the height that I require. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of ingenuity to get going. So basically what I'm going to do is keep it focused here and we're going to see if I can use the app to see what I'm seeing. All right, perfect. So I can see where I show up on the frame here once I'm settled onto my stairs. So I haven't decided if I want to stand beside, kind of here. I see that I can see the corner of the banister here, but that's the least important part of this. So that probably will be cropped off anyways um, to create to create the. Um, composition that I'm looking for anyways. But if I wanted to, I would just go and raise it up a little bit. So I might do that later. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be just recording what I see on the camera and not so much recording it on the camera uh, because I can't take pictures if I'm uh, videoing. So it is a little bright, so we are going to compensate for the brightness, but it's going to disappear as soon as a cloud comes over top. So I have to be ready for that. Yes, look at that beautiful light. Oh my gosh. I need to use the stairwell more often. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now it's getting darker. So we can either do some really dark moody stuff or we're going to adjust our settings and hope that it does not get bright again real fast. All right, so I'm just kneeling on the steps here to get the shot. I kind of do want the painting in for some because I love the colors of it, but I might actually end up changing my outfit. Beautiful. Yeah, I think I'm going to go change my outfit into something yellow to complement the blue tones in the image. But first, let's just do a few more here because I love the light coming in right now. So if I scooch down, this is where the app is really handy because it allows you to see exactly how high up you are or how far back you are. It's one of the best tools for self-portraits for sure. There we go, if I do that.
see what happens if I go below it here. Let's see. So it's kind of fun just to play around with different kinds of framing you can do, seeing what you can create, and yeah, just using what space you have. You don't need a lot of space to create epic art. You just need a little bit of light and a little bit of creativity. Ooh, yes, I love that. Gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly take a picture of what I'm looking at so you can see or take a video. Oh, hold on. All right, so we're doing a little bit of video here so you can see I changed my outfit. So that way, hold on, it's gonna get darker. So that way we're invoking a little color theory between myself and the painting. And that's kind of what we're going for today. So the next little bit of clip is going to be on my phone, taken on my phone to show what the app is showing me. So you can see how I create from there. All right, we're gonna invoke a little color theory here and in, uh, bring in some yellow and red with the teal. Uh, I feel it can look really cool in terms of images. So we're gonna go. So now what I've done is I've made the tripod a lot shorter and I've placed it over the top of the stairs to see we, what we can get from this angle. I wanted to see how if we could get some of the skylight in there um, just because then it will mimic the shape of the light on the wall because that's obviously where the light is coming from. And yeah, just create some context to the image. So I'm going to adjust it just a little more and then we'll get started. there. Beautiful. Perfect. Alright, so now we have to worry about the brightest thing in the frame is the is the skylight. So we want to take that into account when I'm positioning myself. Because obviously while the skylight's beautiful, I want the focus to be on me. If I'm being completely honest. Alright. All right, friends, so here are the photos that came out as a result of the uh, small space self-portraits that I did on my staircase. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of how I call them and then we'll go through the editing process that I normally take. 
So the first thing I do is load everything into Lightroom and then what I'm going to do is select ones that are similar using survey mode. This allows me to compare them and see which ones stand out to me the most. So out of these ones, that was the first one I took. So I always like to take that or uh, keep that one just as a kind of memento. So out of these ones, I'm really loving that one. This one I like my hands in the darkness and this one. So usually I end up with quite a lot, I'm not going to lie. All right, uh, that one, this one for sure. This one I like. Ah, this is where we changed outfits, definitely. Love me some color. I'm also going to uh, five star the videos because we will be using those. All right, pulling here, you can see, see how if I didn't change my settings, but the light would change, how drastically different it is. Um, now the good thing is shooting in raw, you can obviously pull up the shadows or um, pull down the highlights, but only to a certain extent. So I try to like to get it as good in camera as possible because like that's going to be completely blown up, blown out. While it could be a usable thing, we'll keep it so we can take a look at it. Um, there's going to be better photos here. Ooh, I like that one reaching. That one's dark, but usable. I like the shadow over the eyes. Let's go. So this one I was trying shadow over the eyes, but I don't really like the way it turned out. This one I love. This one I like. That was me getting the composition. There we go. So now we're taking a look. And this is where the light drastically changed a lot because we had some cloud coverage. So that's why the skylight went completely white. But I might end up making these black and white. So in that case, that would mirror that, which might be kind of cool. We'll just have to take a look and see. So we're selecting and we're going. And I'm really just picking out ones that stand out to me as something I like. There's no reason for it aside from mm, I like the composition or I like the way the light is or I think it has potential and then once I get a closer look at it then I can decide whether or not it's a keeper or not. Keep those ones. I did a few hand photos. Here we go. I'm not sure. I think I have better ones with that. Go with that one and then we have one more. And that one. Perfect. So that is how we call them. The next step is then to apply presets or decide how I want to edit them. So for me, I like to start with my uh, Archipelago Collective presets. So some of my favorite ones include a Nomad. I love the Nomad presets because they make the skin like, like that I love. But I'm not sure because I want that to keep its blue blues. So let's see what the other ones do. Ooh, I kind of like that, but it still mutes it a little. That's the one thing I find a lot of presets tend to mute the blues, which are my favorite part. <laughs> uh, ooh, that could be neat. We'll keep you in mind. All right, now let's go with the Odyssey. Uh, uh, ooh, I like the skin tone, plus I like the color of the image. Let's keep that one on there for now. And we'll go play through a few others that I have as well, just to see. These ones are a bit orangey. See, here's some black and white. So those are always good, but kind of missed the point of the blue here. Plus, keep you in mind, I'm going to be having, um, when I did the, when I changed my outfit, that's going to also make a difference as well. These ones are a bit too soft for my liking at the moment for this particular set. Let's see, film. These ones are old presets, but sometimes still usable. Let's go take a look at, I have some odd ones in here, which are sometimes fun to play with, but you can see they do a number on the colors. That one's kind of fun. Let's see. These are my usual ones for the studio. LXC is always a winner. You know what? I might just stick with that. <laughs> it's always go back to your old faithful. All right. So we like that one. Let's just keep looking and see if there's anything else. That one could be cool, but we'll stick with this one. 
All right, so I'm gonna apply this to all of these just to see what happens. So obviously this one we're gonna to wanna to bring up just a little bit. I wanna keep it dark-ish, but not completely dark. Look at that, yes. And it can warm it up a little as well. All right, so let's copy that. Now this one is okay because it is a darker one. We could play around with the black and whites just to see what that would look like as well. Because uh, the focus wasn't so much on the painting here. It was more so just on the light. Like that would be good. And then I actually would get rid of the painting here. So the only thing you see is me. We'll go here. LXC. Because our light came back for a hot second. Da -da -da. Going, it went away again for a hot second. Da -da -da. This angle though, it's pretty good. I really like it. Ooh, this one's gonna be good. Yes, I love that. Now what you can do as well is to maintain the colors here. You can go down to um, this tab here, the HSL tab, and you can bring up the blues and the cyans if you want to change it that way. You can also change the hue. So right now my blues are skewing a bit more green, so I'm gonna make them a bit more blue again. There we go, yeah. And then we can increase the yellows just a tickle because I do want, I like the warmth in the skin there. So this would be more accurate to what I like. But again, as the light changes, so will the color balance. Ah, here we go. I had changed my outfit. So yes, look at that color. Hello, color theory. All right, there we go. We're gonna just pull up some of the shadows. Oh, these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But you can see, so when I get this into Photoshop, if I wanted to, I could technically get rid of this side of the wall um, just by using a gradient, uh, like a darker gradient. I mean, you could do that in here too. So if I take this little tool and I go like so forth, it creates a gradient across that wall, which kind of removes some of the distraction over there and then it oops then you make two of them apparently well i could do that and then we can just maximize what the light was already doing essentially for amplifying what was already happening and then when i get into photoshop i can remove that specific white frame and anything that kind of stands out there this just gives you an idea of different ways that you can hide distractions to get the focus where you wanted it to go now if I go here and I bring up this, it's going to be centrally focused on there. Well again, once I get into Photoshop, I can delete all of these things or remove those things so it's a clean image with this being the center point, which is ultimately what I would like. Let me bring down that. Ooh, painterly. We don't want to be too painterly, but a little painterly because we have a painting. That's beautiful. All right. We're going to copy this, but we're not going to copy those gradients. So, get rid of it. Right. And we're going to go and apply. 